again, UPF fans. Welcome to another episode of the Universal Pokemon Federation. I am, of course, your host and your reigning champ, Don Pokemon. I've got a great show for you lined up today. The main event, of course, being the multi-battle between Courtney, Jerome, Moonraker versus my colleague VB and myself. The stakes of that match being, if I win, you will get more entertainment in the form of Devil's Championship. But first, we'll... The following is a message from Mark Cameron in UPF. I hope you enjoyed our form of call as much as I did, Mark. Anyway, I spent some time thinking about a battle, and I've been growing increasingly worried that you may have thought that was an actual battle. It was merely just a test for you, Mark Cameron. As for the UPF, my sights are not set on the title, but my goals will become clear, all in due time. That's not anything for you to worry about, Justin. I hope to be seeing you soon, Mark. Are we back? The feed went out. Are we... Is it back on? Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it seems we know now who sent that impromptu message to Mark Cameron in the last episode of the UPF. Uh, we currently have a crew trying to get a response from Mark Cameron for the Sonic Wizard. Uh, let's see what he has to say. You know, I was wondering who it could have been. Who it could have been that attacked me in my home through some strange phone call. I should have expected it would have been the trainer who's been hiding their face this entire time. Should have known it was the Sonic Wizard. I have every reason to come hunt you down and beat your ass in your own home, just like how you did to me. But I won't. I won't. Because that's not how we do things in the UPF. That's not. And you're new, so I'll give you a pass. I don't know how you did things prior to the UPF, but... Here's how we're going to settle things. 6v6, standard battle. No restrictions. I'm going to teach you exactly how we do things here. I'm going to kick your ass just like how I did previously. Because you made this personal. I'll see you there. Well now, fans, it seems that we have ourselves our other battle for the night. Who will win this one? Will it be the faceless enigma that is the Sonic Wizard? Or will it be the charismatic can-do champ that is Mark Cameron? Let's jump right into it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we are kicking things off with a battle between Mark Cameron and the Sonic Wizard. And by we, I mean me, Jay Caliber. Uh, Mark has a really, really bright fire in his eyes today as he pairs up his Amoongus with uh, the Sonic Wizard's Dragonite. And off the bat, Dragonite is not playing any games. Dragonite's up with a powerful fire punch. Monstro has returned with Spore, which is probably Amoongus' most favorite, favorite move of all time, I would say. And luckily for Wizard, he had a Lumber, which allows him to wake up right away and return another Fire Punch with a super effective damage. Mark has caught on to this and gone for Spore one more time to get the sleep now that it is guaranteed. And he has the ball in his card now, as uh, the Wizard will be forced to switch or stay in and maybe deal some more damage. Mark has switched out into Autumn and Al Creamy of the, looks like the vanilla variety, so he's keeping it a little fresh, sort of the typical uh, strawberry. One more sleep turn, it looks like, as Mark is able to charge up special attack and special defense with the use of Calm Mind, and with Fairy-type damage, that is not going to bode well for this Dragonite. And it looks like he will be taking Dragonite out of the fight, just in case. Good move on his part. He's returned it in for Gengar, and Gengar is able to resist the Fairy-type Dazzling Gleam. Mark has decided to 
drag Alcremi out for this matchup and put in his Clinger. Wizard has gone for Sludge Bomb, which uh, would have probably done major damage to Alcremi, but luckily Clinger is able to just shrug it right off. Oh, and Mark has stopped playing games. It looks like he's ready to get this underway and goes for Dynamax on Clinger. Now a dark type move will definitely ruin whatever chance Gengar had at surviving. Wizard has less options now because whatever he does is not going to do enough damage. A Thunderbolt, ooh, not enough. He still has a lot of health behind him and Max Darkness, Darkness is definitely going to do it. Gengar is out of commission for good. Ooh, I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of that. Now Wizard's playing it smart here knowing that Klinger's only real weakness is ground type attacks and he switched in his Swamp Rope. And he's going for Max Darkness once again, which does a little less than half damage to Swampert. Let's see if Swampert can finish it off. And one Earthquake is, wow, surprisingly going to do it. Klinger is down. Klinger is down for the count. The Dynamax is over on the long side. This is a big, big turn. Now, Amoongus is back in. Amoongus' grass type damage will be big against Swampert. Just like I thought, I put in Dragonite, which will heavily resist grass. Uh, Monstro had went for Toxic there instead of a grass type move. I guess he was predicting the switch. Monstro has been switched out and now we have Styles. Dragonite has gone for Fire Punch once again and Styles as a fire type itself is not going to be phased by that. And right there, oh, Mark has made a huge mistake. He's going for Poltergeist, but he seems to not remember that Dragon Knight had already used its berry, so Poltergeist will not be effective at all. And Styles cannot be in any longer after eating that Dragon Claw. Autumn is back in, which is favorable against Dragon Knight, but Extreme Speed is out to do some extra damage to Autumn. But Dazzling Gleam is going to, oh, surprisingly not get rid of Dragonite just yet, even though it's super effective. Without the Calm Mind, it looks like it won't be what he needs. Now, Wizard has decided to go for a boost to get as much health back on Dragonite as possible. And Mark has gone for Mystical Fire, which is an interesting play. He maybe assumed that Dragonite would not be able to do enough damage and that Wizard would switch out because a resisted hit that doesn't affect any of Dragonite's moves so far is not preferable for Autumn, not at all. I'm not sure Dragonite will be able to do enough damage to finish off how creamy like this, but he has chosen not to. Instead of going for Roost one more time to get to close max health. And Mark has done the same with Autumn's Recover. Now both Pokemon are back in a great position. Dragonite is going for Power Punch again. I hope he doesn't run out of those because it's been an important part of his moveset so far. And now Mark has decided to go on the defensive and build up Combine once again. This will do a much better job of finishing off Dragonite than before. And with leftovers, he will get a good chunk of health back from that Fire Punch, which did not do as much as I'm sure Wizard was hoping. Now both players are in a position where they could either get a kill or be killed. Uh, another combine. So now Mark definitely wants this Dragonite gone at, at this point. He was unfortunately burned by that fire punch, so leftovers is not going to help him anymore. I'm sure that's the last thing Mark wanted. Nobody wants to lose their snacks. That's just not fun at all. Mark could go for a couple things. Another another recover or a dazzling gleam here could get rid of Dragonite or put Dragonite in a spot where he doesn't want to be. And Recover is going to remove the damage from that last Fire Punch that Wizard has been favoring this whole time. Even though he doesn't get any extra boost from Leftovers, it's still not to be at way more health than he was before. I'm sure a Dazzling Gleam here would definitely get rid of Dragonite. I don't think Wizard wants to stay in. But another Fire Punch is going to do it. Maybe he was hoping for a critical hit. And let's see how much this Dazzling Gleam does. That's, uh, oh, that's a finisher right there. Dragonite is not willing to battle any longer. Autumn has prevailed. That was a long fight they just had, but Autumn has prevailed. Dragonite was surprising me in how well it was able to take its attacks, but Ludicolo has switched in to challenge the newly stacked up Autumn. Ludicolo has set up Rain probably to activate its Swiftsome ability, which will give it a nice speed boost over Autumn, but again, Autumn might be able to tank 
Ludicolo special attacks if it is not a physical Pokemon. Ludicolo could pull out anything here now that it's faster than Autumn and Sal Creamy, which is very threatening at the moment. Right here we have an Ice Beam. That is not going to do really anything significant, unfortunately. Ludicolo can't hope for a freeze because uh, Autumn is already burned. And it's not even a move that has the same type, same type attack bonus. So right now, Wizard is kind of just throwing moves out there and hoping for the best, and I would not blame him. Now he's going for Giga Drain, which, well, will counteract the life or damage, hopefully. But if Mark goes for another attack, Ludicolo will be no more. And another Dazzling Gleam is going to be the one to do it. Ludicolo is out and the rain still stands. If I were Mark, I'd want to be recovering right now to make sure Autumn sticks around as long as possible because it looks like Autumn is going to take him pretty far through this battle right now. Now he has put in Arcanine. With that rain up, whatever fire attacks it has in store are not going to do nearly enough damage. So perhaps Arcanine has something else. Oh, and a Flare Blitz has jumped in, but again, with the rain, it's not going to be that great. And a Dazzling Gleam is in. Even though it's not very effective, it's possible that Mark can stay in and survive one more Blitz and go for a Recover, because Recover here would put Arcanine in a pretty bad spot. It could decide to go for Flare Blitz again. Let's hope that maybe a critical hit could happen in his favor. And... In a surprising turn, Flare Blitz has done enough damage to get rid of Alcremi once and for all. Autumn has left the scene. Both trainers now have four Pokemon remaining. And now that the rain is gone, Arcanine's firepower can truly shine. Styles is in. Arcanine has been switched out for Swampert, which is a much, much stronger matchup against Styles. Let's hope Swampert can survive these boomerangs. Ooh, that is going to do it. It was it was very, very fair of Mark to use boomerang against the fire type. Now Wizard's Dragapult is in, probably the strongest Pokemon he had hiding. Monstro is back in, probably to put this uh, terrifying offensive threat to sleep. And it will eat a Shadow Ball and it'll not do enough to faint it. That will be the end of Monstro as a Fire Blast is going to take it out. Monstro's been eating fire type attacks this whole game and I have to show my sympathies for it because that cannot be fun for a grass type. The champ is here to do what he can against Dragapult. Dragapult's a high damaging Pokemon, but so is the champ. And whoever is taking whose hits is going to determine the victor. Wizard has decided to Dynamax. This is probably the strongest Pokemon he has. So combining that with Dynamax is a very, very good play on his part. And and just like that, Max Moment is going to do it. It did more than enough damage to really, really scare Mark at this point. And it has lowered the champ's attack. Dragapult will be more than ready to finish it off if Mark decides to keep it in. And with this next Max Wormwind, that is exactly what has happened. The champ is down, the champ is down. Very unfortunate here. Both trainers are down to two Pokemon. A ghost type Max Phantasm is gonna finish off Styles once and for all. Styles is not equipped to handle ghost type moves. Mark is down by one more Mon. The Dynamax has ended and it is up to Raichu to finish off the two Pokemon Wizard has standing. Draco Meteor, fearsome move with very, very high power coming from a Dragon type like Dragapult. The battle has ended. So with that, this was an exciting battle to watch. Thank you guys so much for being here, and we will see you in the next one. Well, now, that was quite a dynamic finish on the part of the Sonic Wizard. Let's see what else he has in store for the UPF and his own personal goals. For the moment, he himself doesn't know. Switching gears now, uh, my colleague VB came in contact with me to plan for our upcoming multi-battle. Let's take a listen. Yes, Phoebe, what is it? 
I'm trying to put together my team right now, okay? Boss, I was hoping we could talk about strategy for the battle. I was watching back your battle with Courtney, and I noticed that... Don't worry about strategy. Just bring your best Pokemon, and don't screw it up. I don't want to be humiliated again. But boss, we need to come up with some kind of strategy, otherwise we're going to get crushed. Because with all due respect, you lost pretty badly to Courtney. Vivi, stop. I didn't get to being the UPF world champion by worrying about the details. Bring your best Pokemon, and I'll bring my best Pokemon. I'll see you in the arena. Well now, it seems like the challengers Courtney and Jerome also had the same idea in planning strategy before the battle. Just get on with it. Hey Jerome, how you doing? Hey Court, how you doing today? Not bad. So uh, how are you feeling going into this battle? You've been losing pretty consistently. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about it, honestly. I can't wait to, this is a great opportunity to show what I'm really capable of. Ugh, do you want to talk strategy at all, or? I, I think the only strategy we need is to bring our power and absolutely kill them with offense. They won't know what hit them. Hell yeah. Sounds like a plan. Let's do it. See you out there. Perfect. Well, now, it's so sweet to see them getting along so well. But before we move on to our main event, we've got more merch in the store. At teespring.com slash stores slash UPF, we have designs such as this one. And we also have some new items in the store featuring your favorite champ. So go online to teespring.com slash stores slash UPF and wrap the dawn today. Now, moving on to our main event of the night, the multi-battle, featuring myself, my colleague VB, versus Courtney and Jerome Moonraker. For the new championship on the line. Let's get into it. In one corner, we have Don Pokemon and Weeby Villain against Courtney and Jerome Mo Moonraker. A lot. It seems a very heated battle. Yes, a lot of heat and competition here today. This is the battle that we've been waiting for for a very long time. I'm sure Don and Weeby have been begging for this day. So mm -hmm. we start off with Garchomp and Lapras against Zap oh, Galarian, Zap Galarian Darmanitan, otherwise known as Mark's, I mean, Weeby's very own Big Chungus. And right off the bat, Jerome has made the smart decision to pull Garchomp out and put in Dustnoil instead. Let's see what the next move will be. Courtney decided to Dynamax early here. She wants this damage as quick as possible, and I don't blame her. You want to poke up against these Pokemon. Mm -hmm. That uh, G-Max Residence, if she does go for it, that Aurora Veil is going to prevent a lot of damage from the opposition. And knowing that they have very big powerhouses in Dawn's side, that Aurora Veil might actually do a lot of work. Big Chunk is obviously targeting Garchomp here, and Dustnor is not able to take the Icicle Crash and is down for the- One hit K- Oh! Yikes. Yeah, you really have to be careful about that girl attack six. Lapras returning with G-Max Resonance that's able to destroy Galarian Zapdos in one hit. It even moved faster than Zapdos, which is a huge surprise. Zapdos is the strong leg Pokemon. It's hard to believe yeah. that slowly in this battle. Ooh, here comes Zygarde, another Ice Weakness, actually. They have to be very careful here. Yes, Don has one Ice Weakness after another with Zapdos. I highly doubt that Zygarde can tank another G-Max Resonance of Courtney decided. Especially that four times weakness. Mm -hmm. And Weeby has decided to Dynamax himself. I guess he wants that extra damage, which is definitely what he wants. But Dynamax, mm -hmm. Dynamax is a little risky, no? Yeah, the, you won't even be able to have your Gorilla Tactics on. You do actually do a little less damage. Ooh, a Max Flare and to, oh, to Lapras. Wow, I guess setting the sun? Not going okay. as much as I'm sure he was anticipating, but he does get more variety in the moves, so maybe it is a fair decision. 
indeed. Also, well, um, that Auroraville did reduce the damage by a lot, though. Mm. Keep that in mind. Nighthawk retaliating against Big Chungus for at least half itself, and Zygarde <laughs> is down. Completely on their part. Being honest, with the, combination. with a Lapras like this, I am not sure if that would have even made a huge difference. Big Chunk is going True. for again on Nighthawk, who is actually weak to this, unlike Lapras. Ooh. Finish it off. The Auroraville coming in clutch. That would have been a one shot, but even in Sun Animaster, but survived it. Auroraville is really strong in this meta. And Nighthawk has decided he's had enough of Big Chunk. Big Chunk is down for the count with another Iron Head, followed by Don Zekrom, who is a yet a ah. type weakness. Right now, all that's oh. left is Butters against Lapras and Nighthawk and whatever else. God. Yeah, but this is also very dangerous since it's always going to be a two versus one situation at all times because uh, Don Pokemon has no remaining Pokemon and Jerome cannot have two at the same time. So Don is going to be of no help to Butters at the moment. Oh, flinch? Wow. Flinch. Unfortunate. Ooh. Flinch. Stab. Oh, I guess you could say it melted Butters here. <laughs> Butters is out, and Lacephalon gets a nice beast boost from that. Nighthawk, honestly, I mean, just, uh, keep, his, keep his head to himself at this point. Weeby has one option no. left, and he has chosen Mr. Scarny. Ah, uh, that's a one-hit KO, definitely. Mr. Scurrying is down. Blacephalon has eaten up. But this mm -hmm. is going to end it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Until then. This is absolutely unbelievable. I've already beaten these two people, and now you've put up this championship on the line for this match? And out of everything, you've put me with VB? Look, I love him like a son. But in terms of skill, he does not exactly have it all upstairs. This decision making is completely subpar. Now if you want to do your job, you'll send a message to Quadrivoli, and you'll make sure that this is taken care of immediately. Do you understand? Oh. I didn't realize you were still here. Let's get on with it, shall we? Oh. Hello? What? So a lot of people are wondering what I was told on the phone. Well, I was corrected on something I said. Turns out Weeby Villain's initials are not VW, they're WV. I guess this is how they spell things in Norway. But this isn't just a small correction. I'm furious now. A trainer in the UPF with the same initials as the man that killed my father? Now, if Weeby is that trainer, I'm out for blood. That multi battle was good, but it's just not good enough. Weeby. If you're watching, I'm going to take away your hopes and dreams. I want a rematch. Just you and me. But this time, whoever loses can never have a UPF championship match ever again. I look forward to you accepting my challenge. What an interesting challenge that Jerome has presented. I'm not sure why he would willingly throw away his own chances at a championship match because VB will crush him. He has beaten him before. I have beaten him before. Maybe he thinks something different will occur. We'll find out on the next episode of the UPF. I have been your host and reigning champion for over a hundred days, Don Pokemon, signing off. <laughs>